Hi, and we are back here on False Count Radio. Without further ado, I have Spike TV's own Half Pint Brawler owner, Puppet the Psycho Dwarf, on the air. Puppet, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Enjoying life, traveling, and uh, beating up midgets. Beating up midgets. Now, um, you know, you guys are on Spike TV every Wednesday at 11 p.m. For fans that haven't checked out the broadcast, what would you say to draw them in to checking out the show? You know what? This is what our show is. It's uh, Little People, Big World, On Beer, meets Hardcore Midget Wrestling, meets Girls Gone Wild, meets the Ozzy Osbourne, all in one, baby. Uh, that's, a, that's a great way to explain it. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> growing up, were you a wrestling fan? If so, who'd you look up to? Uh, it's always, you know what? I was lucky enough he got me into the business. Uh, when I was growing up, I was always a big fan of Randy the Macho Man. And uh, when I first started off uh, coming back into the business, when we opened up the uh, Half Pint Brawlers back in the day, it was called Bloody Midgets. Uh, uh, Randy got us involved with the Slim Jim Tour, and uh, it was such an honor, and it was so much fun for me. And then I, I've been loving wrestling, you know, working it and doing it, and uh, it's, it's a great life. Now, was wrestling your first career choice? If not, what was? My first, no, uh, I started off wanting to be an actor. Uh, I did a lot of stunt work out in L.A. I did a lot of stage work. Uh, you might have saw me in The Babe with John Goodman. Um, I did some stunts for the Leprechaun movie. Uh, I joined Vinny the Jet stunt team, which done Batman Return, you know, a bunch of different, bunch of different movies. Um, but I just wasn't getting enough work. It wasn't thrilling enough for me. I just walked across the screen back in the day. The midgets weren't as hot back in the day. Then I ended up becoming a sidekick radio host of Man Cow's Morning Madhouse, uh, where I was also doing stunts for him, you know, being a side character for him for a few years. Windy City Wrestling found me and said, you've got to be a wrestler, bro, and uh, talked me into it. And I saw that the little guys got a lot of tension during the matches, so I said, what's better to open up my own midget company and have a bunch of midgets touring around. I started the show at Sluggers right across the street from Wrigley Field uh, 15 years ago. From day one, it was in the middle of January in Chicago. The place sold out. We had a line going around the block, standing in the freezing cold, watching us through the windows, and I knew I had a hit. Now, would you say that your professional wrestling training was different than others uh, due to your size? Um, no. Uh, when I when I went through the Windy City training, I was the only little guy there, and uh, it was great. Sam just put me through the same same thing everybody else was doing, man. Um, and that way, you know, I think it was something different for him, so he made it. It was kind of like a challenge for him. But I, I no way. I, we did everything that that, that I the, the big guys did. And the big thing about the, my company is I, I'm not disrespecting the old day wrestling actually little Cato or beautiful Bobby D is the son of Ward Littlebrook who was pretty much the guy that started everything in the WWE for the midgets um, I didn't want to do the jokey joke stuff I didn't want to be the clown I when, when, when we were inside the fort you know inside the ring uh, we do everything the big guys do but they, we fall farther I mean we come off the top ropes we do the hardcore stuff we do you know the family shows but, you know, we're in there, you know, we're athletes, and that's the thing, man. And, you know, a lot of people are, are protesting me because I use the word midget or this is the way I market it. It's just a marketing tool for me. Nobody's going to come out and see little people wrestling. They're out there. When I say midget wrestling, you know exactly what my product is. Um, so my guys are all athletes and of course we're never going to be a professional basketball player you know or a baseball player uh this is the way that we get our our you know our thrills through you know the athletics and uh you know it's something that we've always wanted to do and we're doing it and we're making a career out of it and we're loving it you know and that's something i wanted to touch down on was uh little people of america and others protested outside of one of your guys's events in 2006 uh what do you think of that I loved it, man. You know why? What's better to get more attention? Midgets protesting with signs, passing out flyers, telling people don't to come in, which makes them come in, and uh, midgets protesting midgets. Come on, dude. That was the greatest. 
That was the greatest advertisement that I got on a live show right there at the live band. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand why. Now, uh, what is the independent scene in Chicago like, and is it more uh, conducive to the midget or to a midget wrestler than other areas in the country? No, man. We travel all over the country, my friend. Uh, as you see on the show, we went to Mexico. We go to California. We go to the up and down the East Coast. We're not just centralized in Chicago. The office is in Chicago, but this is a national act. We're we're on the road all constantly. I'm down right now, just leaving Louisiana to head to Houston. Um, so, so I mean, yeah, we're a national act, but we we've been touring the nation for 15 years. That's awesome. Now, um, my co-host Viper has a couple questions. So, Viper, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, um, actually, I uh, was wondering, what are your memories of your time with World Wrestling All Stars? Oh, they were great times. That was the first time I I got to go over to Europe, uh, and we got to go to Australia. I got to see the world with those guys, and uh, it was really my first time on the big scale, you know, playing the bigger arenas, uh, you know, touring with people that I grew up watching, you know, and uh, it was a big deal for me. It was a, a, a lot of lessons and uh, life lessons on the wrestling and you know, because we were always, uh, you know, back in the day, we were bloody midgets, and we were just kind of a smaller group in the underground bars, and that really got our names out there, and it really helped my career, and uh, I'm very grateful. And then it led me to go to TNA after that, uh, which was awesome, and then, you know, I decided to branch off and do this half-point baller thing, because I've always believed in this product, and here we are on Spike TV, so uh, it's, it's really fun for me to watch this project grow. But uh, the WWA was a big stepping stone for me and uh, really got the name out there. Awesome. Well, speaking of TNA, what are your uh, memories of your uh, first NWA TNA show? Uh, first memory, uh, we were in Vegas. No, that was the WWA. Let's see, TNA, Jeff Jarrett, just when he came up to me, because we were on the WWA together, and this was when he was first uh, opening up the company, we went out, because I know I have over 50 radio stations, and we went out on a morning radio station tour together to help him promote his event. And uh, I got to travel the country with him, and I've barely known him, you know, but a few months. And uh, here I am touring with Jeff Jarrett promoting his, you know, his promotional group. Uh, and that, that was a real thrill for me, because, you know, I already had the radio experience, and he 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 believed in in, in Tio and I so much that uh, it, it was it was a thrill. Uh, it, 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 again, another life lesson. It, it taught me ways to promote my event and and make it bigger and better. And and as an individual, I grew as I you know Randy helped me, Jeff Jarrett helped me, and all of them you know. And uh, it, 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 it's it's uh, what can I say? I'm speechless when people go out of their way for us and, and really believe in it. Because I think they saw that we did the regular wrestling also, and they said, wow, these guys are really, you know, they're training. They're, 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 these guys are wanting to do, start something new, evolve something um, with the midget wrestling. And I hope, you know, afterwards I'm done and, and uh, my legacy is that, hey, these did it for real. They did it themselves. And uh, here we are on Spike. We're having a ball. And yeah, I can't. I know this show's a success because we're, we're, we're booking up to the end of the year. We're going into next year already. You can go to halfpintbrawlers.com, check our schedule out. We're nonstop touring and uh, loving life. Now, one of our uh, listeners had a question that they sent in, and it was that, uh, whose idea was it for you to pull the gun on Jeff Jarrett in the early days of TNA? Jeff. Russo. <laughs> Russo. <laughs> now, um, you recently made a one-night return to TNA Wrestling and announced during a match. Uh, what was that like, and what do you think of the direction that TNA is going? Uh, you know what? It was a thrill to go back and see all the boys because I haven't seen them for, you know, I'm going to say, what, four years. And uh, it was great working with TNA again. We've had a really close friendship, and Borash is a great guy. And, uh, you know, it was just great to be back into the energy and say hello to everybody and, you know they're thrilled for me, and they saw that. You know, I think they were they were confused when I, you know, when we kind of separated ways because I just I had to make a break and try to do something with the half point brawlers, and 
but it's it's a thrill and it's great. So we're going to do some more cross promotion coming up here. And it, yeah, I mean we're on the same network. Uh, we're helping each other out, and uh, it, it's funny how things come in a full circle. Everything comes in a full circle, and uh, here we are. We're, I'm doing my own show, and I'm back on TNA promoting my event, and they're and they're supporting me 100%. And I, you know, like I said, everybody's been so great to me, so and helpful, and spreading the company out that it may, what you know, anything they need, I'll do. And when they ask me to come back, I come back. See, and that's an awesome way to think too. Uh, my co-host, ECW original Gary Wolf, has a couple questions. So, Gary, go ahead. Hey, how you doing? Great. Love the show. I want to put you over. I think it's actually a good good thing. I mean, I'm actually surprised it took so long to get you guys on. Uh, I thought there would have been something going. I guess you said you've been doing this for 15 years. Uh, you should have been on TV 10 years ago, probably the way I look at it. And uh, Brad, man, how did I you? I really appreciate that. You know. Yeah, I wanted to ask you how. Right now. I'm sorry. How did you think about uh, the uh, Australia? Did you do one Australian tour and uh, Germany tour? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, the Australia tour is uh, the, but that I believe that yeah, the Australia tour is the very first one I went on um, after we did Vegas. Uh, then they took us to Australia. Uh, I got to go see Sydney, Melbourne. It was it was awesome, man. Uh, like I said, that that's when I got to see the world where. I really never thought I was going to be able to travel that much and do stuff like that. I was, a, you know, younger back then, and uh, it was a great experience. Uh, and it was great the way the people took to us and uh, really liked our matches. And uh, Tio and I, you know, we, we exploded it, and the, the arenas were going crazy. And I never had that many people watching me before that WWA. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I, I've had some experience in, in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and stuff like that, and had a great time. I actually lived in Melbourne for like nine months, and I had a blast. Oh, uh, okay. What do you think about you guys uh, eventually hitting Japan? I mean, I'm sure you guys will be over like Rover in Japan. You know, I, I've been, you know I'm hoping. You know, I'm always hoping and working. I haven't been there yet. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of people, I've had a couple of Japanese promoters, you know, reach out to us. My announcer, Spider Nate Webb, uh, actually has been over there several times uh, wrestling over there. And uh, he's always saying that we need to get over there because they're going to love us. And it'll be something different for them to see with them. They're just doing the hardcore style wrestling. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always open for anything. And uh, I would love to take the cameras over to Japan and do an episode of the half pint brawlers in Japan, man. That would be awesome. But yeah, because you guys will be able to do some hardcore shit over there because Japan loves hardcore. Tables, ladders, chairs. Yeah. You know, you got the bed of yeah, nails. They, yeah, you yeah, guys will have a They love that stuff, 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 but we'd have a blast over there. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I have one more question for you. Uh, uh, your experience with TNA, I know the other guys asked you, uh, how do you think the direction of TNA is going now than it was back when you were there? Uh, well, you know what? It's changed a lot. Uh, back in the day, it was a bunch of young guys. Uh, you know, there's, some of them are still around, of course. Uh, but it, it was a lot of the young guys, and the X Division was a big deal back then. Um, I see that they, you know, when I go back, they're bringing in the, the Hulk Hogan's and, you know, the older, you know, talent and, and – and, you know, taking a total different direction, it seems like. Um, I guess their ratings are doing good, so they're doing something right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they're getting over a million viewers, I heard. And uh, I'm always a believer, man. you got to evolve into something, you know, whatever the show is going to be to make the people happy and get the viewers to watch and, and put on a good program. And, of course, Hulk Hogan, man, he draws people, right? 